What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, we're going to cover our first WF control and that will be text blocks. You're going to need them if you want to build desktop applications and want to display text. And we're going to see how to use text blocks using the XAML language. And then in the next video, which will come out tomorrow, you will learn about how to do the same thing using code behind because code behind is going to be C-sharp code and it's also going to be important if you want to build desktop applications. This is just the first part of a longer series of videos, but more on that later. But now let's get started with our first WPF project, which will use text blocks. I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to use the WPF.NET Framework app and this one will be called Text Block Demo. Once we start this up, you can see that we are inside of a window. So our main window XAML is a window which contains a grid and we have an extra video on grid. So if you want to know more about that, check that out. But let's have a look at a text block specifically. So there are different types of controls and we're going to see later on in the course also how to create our own controls but for now let's look at how we can actually create such a text block and define some data in it so for example here i create a text block and this will say hello world for example okay so if we look at our application we could see here at the top left there is this hello world statement and let's make our window a little smaller so that this actually will take any effect so it will have a height of well 50 is probably not enough let's make it 150 times 200 maybe this will be enough for our block here okay so we can see it a little better now it just says hello world there so that's what we can do with our text block we can just display text but we can do a lot more here we can actually play around with formatting so we can use inline formatting in order to change our text up a little bit. For example, I could make this world statement bold. In order to do that, I just need to use the bold keyword. And everything that will be inside of the bold tags here will now be bold. So you can see now it says hello and world, as well as the exclamation mark are bold. Now if you want to make a text italic, you can just use something like and hello you and this you if i want to make it italic i'm just going to use the italic keyword and this will be like this okay and you will now be italic all right so now a little bit more about what you can expect in the next few weeks so in the next two weeks we are going to upload a wpf video every single day on this channel so Definitely hit that like and subscribe button if you don't want to miss out. The like button is just to help us with the algorithm and the subscribe button is to help you to not miss out on this opportunity to learn WPF for free. But we also have created an entire course, an entire WPF masterclass course. You can find the link in the description below, but you are going to learn more about that later on as well. So tomorrow there will be a video on how to use text blocks using code behind, so using C-sharp code. And then the days after there will be new videos every single day. So the day after tomorrow will be labels, then text boxes, buttons, and some events and how to use events and so forth. So every day a new video. So don't miss out. Hit that subscribe and notification bell button. And then let's get back to the video. Let's say you would like to have a line break. Well, in order to create a line break, we can just use the line break statement. So let me actually put this into a little better of an overview here. So here, I will use something you can see there are a couple of stars which are the favorited ones or the most common ones for example a line break okay so here i can very quickly just make a line break like this and then have another piece of text just afterwards so for example if i would like to go to google.com as a link what i can do is i can make this an actual link by using the hyperlink keyword so here hyperlink and of course it should say google.com still all right this by itself will of course not work it looks like a link but it actually doesn't do anything 
if you want to be able to click on it and actually create an effect with it, what we need to do is to give it a, a direction where it needs to go to. So we need to specifically state what the navigate URI should be. So here you can add a property called navigate URI and you can already see there are a bunch of favorited ones such as command, click, name, and I'm going to use the navigate URI. And here I can then define where I want to go. So for example, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www dot and maybe three will be enough, google.com. Okay, this will now send me to Google even though this will just be the link if I run the application and click on it. So here, let me click on it and nothing will happen because it doesn't know what it's supposed to do. It knows what the link is like and you can even see it behaves like a link, but it doesn't do anything on top of that. Okay, so if you want to actually send the user, then you need to request a navigate. Okay, so here, request navigate, which will be an event. This will only work if you add a new event handler. So here you can add a new event handler and it will create this event handler for you. However, this event handler will now be inside of our code behind. So here, this is where you would then have to implement the code to actually start a URL. So we're just going to use the following code in order to actually run this and it will be system diagnostics process start e which is the event arcs that we get so the request navigation event arcs uri absolute uri okay so this is the code that you need to execute if you want to open something in the browser so open the link in the browser now we can run it again and now if you click on google.com in my case it opens up the website so it uses the default browser that you have assigned. In my case, it's Chrome, which is why it opened Chrome. So we are using a system process, which starts a URL, which in this case actually starts an application and gives this application the details where it should go to, in this case, the browser to which website it should go to. All right, so that's a little bit something about text blocks. Now let's actually play around with text blocks a little more and add a couple of properties to text blocks. So I'm going to use lorem ipsum code here, which is just a text. You can let lorem ipsum.com or IO generate lorem ipsum text for you. So here, well, I'm going to agree to select it and here it can generate however many paragraphs you want to have. Okay, so I'm going to copy this code here or this text, so to speak, and put it in here. Now, this will be quite a long text. And if we look at our application, let me actually stop the running process. You can now see that because we are inside of a grid and we have two text blocks, it creates this weird behavior that we have here. Quick pause. This video is sponsored by one of my courses. So you're learning something about WPF in this video and I have the complete C-Sharp Masterclass which teaches you a lot more about C-Sharp if you feel like you need to learn more about C-Sharp to understand everything that's going on. And then if you want to learn everything you need to know about WPF, definitely check out my WPF course. It's a 15-hour course which will teach you everything you need to know about WPF, building an entire Windows Store clone using my apps in order to achieve this Metro design, which is the design language, so to speak, for the latest Windows 10 applications. You can find a link in the description down below, and there you get a huge discount, so don't miss out. Get one of the courses or both of them now. And now let's get back to the video. Okay, so instead of a grid, I'm going to use a stack panel. And if you want to know more about stack panels, definitely check out my video on stack panels. Okay, so here this text block, it, you see, has a lot of text, but it stops at one point. So here this text block has a lot of text, but you can see it's cut off, so it doesn't show everything. And therefore, you can use properties here that will prevent that. So you can use control and space in an empty part of the opening control tag, in this case of the text block tag, and you can see properties as well as events and so forth that are made available to you. And the one that I'm most interested in, in this case, is going to be the text trimming. 
Okay, so I can trim this and you can see there are different settings. So for example, character ellipses, we'll just say dot, 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 which means there's a lot more text to come or generally more text to come. The alternative is word ellipses, which will make a break at the point where the last word that fits into the current window ends and then it says dot, dot, dot. And you can also use none, which is the default value, which will basically do nothing. Okay, so that's text trimming. And then there is another one called text wrapping. And this one will be probably most relevant because here you can wrap, which will now wrap the text. You can see it doesn't cut it off. It wraps it so that it goes to the next line. Or alternatively, you can also use wrap with overflow. And what wrap with overflow will do is the line break occurs if the line overflows beyond the available block width. However, a line may overflow beyond the block width if the line breaking algorithm cannot determine a line break opportunity. As in the case of a very long word constraint in a fixed width container with no scrolling allowed. Okay, what does that mean? Well, we can play around with this. We can actually test it if we have a word which is super long. Okay, so here you can see this is wrap with overflow. So this word here is now way too long and it doesn't fit into one line. So what it does is it just cuts off this word. Now, if we use wrap instead, you can see it just makes a break at this word and keeps on going with the word. So it goes all the way up to this U here. So this is the first line and this here is the second line or it starts in the second line. So that's what this text wrapping property does for you. Now you can of course also play around with text colors and so forth. So for example, if I want to change the color of a text, I can use a foreground here and use any color that I want. In this case, I'm going to use aqua, for example. So you can see now the text will be in this aqua color. If I want to, however, change the color of a specific part of a text block, I can use something called span. Okay, so if you're familiar with HTML, all of the stuff will sound awfully familiar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the span keyword here to make a span tag in which I can now add tags that I want to design differently. So let's say I want to design this set though differently. What I can do here is I can change its foreground color to something else. So let me change it to, let's say, black. So this set do, for example, now will be black. Everything else inside of this text block will take the color and the settings of the text block parent. So the span allows you to override specific parts of your text block that are inside of the span tag. All right, so that's it for this video, at least for how to use text blocks directly inside of XAML. And in the next video, we're going to check out how to make changes to our text block using code behind. And that means inside of the actual code here that we're going to use. And by the way, if you were wondering what this event is, and if you don't understand how events work, no problem. We have extra videos diving deeper into how events work and also what event arcs are and, well, bubbling events and rooted events and all of the good stuff. Okay, so there's still a lot to come. But for now, accept it just as something where you can trigger specific actions using events and they will execute a piece of code, which is inside of the curly brackets of that event definition. All right, so you made it all the way to the end. Thanks a lot for watching the video. I'm super hyped that you are interested in WPF. I think it's amazing. It's pretty cool to build desktop applications using C Sharp and XAML, and I just think it's amazing. So um, in the next few days, there will be more videos, so definitely check those out as well. And if you watch this a little later, there will be a playlist, so you can check out the playlist. I recommend to check that out to really follow along and build all of the cool controls that you're going to learn about. And of course, a lot more about WPF in the upcoming weeks and videos. And also, if you like the video, then please leave a like. It really helps us out. 
And if you want to not miss out on any other cool videos in the future, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. Only 15% of the people watching my videos are subscribed. It's incredible. So please help us out with that number to increase it so that it at one point gets to the 50% mark or something like that. That would be great. All right, so that's it for this video. See you in the next one.